ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ say let us see the interesting topic uh, uh, i request pokri uh, shinwas uh, garu to introduce uh, our resource person yeah uh, thank you good morning uh, andhra pradesh to, uh, today uh, welcome uh, dr monishita uh, pande uh, we all know her previously she took many classes for us uh, ma'am is a faculty in uh, ambedkar university delhi involved in teacher training projects and her research uh, uh, interest including english language teacher education and teacher uh, cognition and teacher beliefs so ma'am we heartily welcome to this uh, entire session and also the team you selected okay ma'am please continue your session thank you so much shrinivas garu yeah. uh, i would like to share my screen So andariki namaskaram uh, i'm very happy to be back amongst you and i welcome all of you to the clef 2 spoken english series for teacher day 9 introducing oneself so as sir has already introduced me i am monishita and with me i have two uh, very talented and resourceful ap uh, senior teachers dr hemlata garu and uh, mr rajesh garu so they will also come into the webinar at different points to help us understand the topic so let's get started so these are the three objectives for today's uh, uh, session first of all we hope that after attending this one hour webinar you will be able to introduce yourself confidently in a variety of contexts in your life each and every context that we face is unique so this webinar will help you to understand the uh, minute differences in language that uh, we need to be aware of when we face different kind of contexts where we have to introduce ourselves also we hope that after this webinar you will be able to make a good first impression because when we meet anybody a group of people or just one individual the way we start our conversation the way we introduce ourselves has a huge impact on what people think about us so making a good strong first impression will also be something that we hope you will be able to do after attending this webinar so uh, here are some do's and don'ts about introducing yourself professionally so we will try to keep the uh, uh, discussion for today's uh, webinar around the professional context because that's where we are expected to in our day to day lives so the first thing is know your audience uh, what kind of relationship do you have with the people with whom you are meeting in what kind of a setting are you meeting your uh, audience so it's very important to keep that context in mind so in real life whether we choose to be formal informal or semi formal this depends on our audience for example if you get a transfer to a new school and it's your first day and you walk into the principal's office to give your joining letter that is definitely a formal context right but on the same first day when you are entering the staff room 
to uh, know your colleagues then that is a semi formal context you don't want to use the same kind of language you used for the principal or the head teacher with your potential colleagues or students because the two contexts are different one is formal the other is semi formal therefore it is very important for us to be mindful of our uh, context or the audience with whom we are interacting the second point is go beyond your professional title so when i'm introducing myself if i simply say i'm monishita pande and i am a faculty at ambedkar university delhi and stop there then we will not be able to move beyond that if we want to have a conversation then i have to go beyond my professional title i have to talk about my contribution what uh, is my uniqueness what have i done in my university what makes me a unique uh, contributor to the life academic life of the university right ismail garu can you mute yourself ismail garu please mute yourself thank you right so when you are introducing yourself remember that just telling your professional affiliation is not enough to have to talk about something that is original be original original means each one of us have a uniqueness about ourselves we are all teachers but there is something about us which defines who we are as a teacher so think about maybe one adjective that defines you who you are as a teacher for example if you ask me uh, to think of an adjective which can explain my originality or my uniqueness i would say i am a very very passionate teacher whatever i do in my class whatever i plan for my students i get very emotionally involved in it i am genuinely involved in the lives of my students or my profession so i think i'm driven by passion and emotion right not in a negative way but in a positive way so similarly sit back and think think what is that one thing which defines you as a teacher if you do this kind of a reflection and you arrive at your contribution to your school's academic life your originality as a teacher then that you can bring into your introduction that's going to have a very good impact on the audience the next point is prepare suppose you are attending an orientation program and you are expected to introduce yourself to a group of 20 teachers or 200 teachers plan your introduction think about what are the things you want to include in it next is be mindful of the cultural context this is a very important point for example in our cultural context we uh, say namaskaram and we introduce ourselves right in the north we say namaste and we uh, begin our introduction or uh, in different parts uh, of our country there are different cultural ways in which we greet and we start our introduction so be mindful of that uh, if we visit any um, event which is at the international level then when we uh, uh, meet others who come from outside india for example people shake hands and then they begin their introduction although of course in this corona virus and covid 19 situation even people in the western countries are saying that namaskar is better than shaking hands you know we already have social distancing taken care there but in in normal context you know if you are traveling to a place where you have a international audience then you might want to open yourself up to a different cultural context of shaking hands if it's a semi formal context for example then people often give a hug not a very close hug but a semi hug so uh, so you have to be mindful of it you know you have to see in what context you are there what is the cultural dominant cultural understanding between people and observe that and also be flexible be open to that right so for example if somebody comes to our country they come to our school uh, they are from say uh, some other country if they come and they say namaskaram we feel very nice we feel very touched that wow they are respecting our culture similarly if you go out of the country or if you are in a event where there are international audience then you also might want to their ways of greeting each other or other things right 
The last point on the slide is be careful when it comes to acting funny while introducing yourself. Now, some of us have very good skills of being humorous. We like to crack jokes. But I would say that when you are introducing yourself for the first time, it's better not to crack any jokes because you never know how people will take your jokes. You can annoy somebody. You can Someone can get angry or upset if they don't like your joke. So it's better not to get into too much of jokes or funny things because that can also hurt people. You never know, right? Now, moving on to the next slide. Let's just, just look at some language expressions for introducing ourselves and others. My name is, this is again formal. So when we are in a formal situation, we say my name is so and so. I am. Now look at the contraction here. It says I, I am. I am. I am Munishita. Look at the difference. I am Munishita versus I am Munishita. Using these weak forms, we call these weak forms. We will come to this uh, in a while in detail. But we use these weak, weak forms in English to make our speech sound natural. The next uh, language expression is, nice to meet you, I am Munishita. Pleased to meet you, I am Munishita. This is semi-formal. Nice to meet you, pleased to meet you. Or it can be formal also, formal, semi-formal, both. Let me introduce myself, I am Munishita. This is a formal way of introducing. I would like to introduce myself, I am Munishita. So this is again formal. So the first one is formal to semi-formal. The second one is informal, semi-formal. Next is semi-formal to formal. And the last two are again formal. So as you can see, the language expression choose is also connected very closely with the formality or informality of our audience, our relationship with the interlocutors. Now let's look at introducing others. After we've introduced ourselves, we might have somebody with us whom we want to introduce. So here are some expressions. Rama, please meet Nilima. This could be one. Rama, have you met Nilima? Next one. I would like you to meet Nilima. Fourth, I would like to introduce you to Nilima. And the last, Leela, this is Ravi. Ravi. This is Leela. So again, you can see some of these expressions are formal, some are informal or semi-formal. For example, Rama meet Nilima, Nilima meet Rama. This can be used in both informal to, uh, actually this can be used for any of the Rama, have you met Nilima? This is informal. I would like you to meet Nilima. This is semi-formal. I would like to introduce you to Nilima. This is very formal. And Leela, this is Ravi. Ravi, this is Leela. This is again formal uh, to uh, semi-formal. Now let's go to the next slide. Here are some responses, right? So when somebody introduces you to somebody else, then you can simply smile and say, nice to meet you, pleased to meet you, happy to meet you. How do you do? So these are some expressions. Now let's look at this dialogue. This is a formal context. So we have a teacher called Anita Rao. Uh, let's imagine that she has uh, come to a new school. This is her first day of school. And she has walked into the room of her head teacher. This is a conversation between Anita, a new teacher, and Satya, the head teacher. Let's look at the conversation. Hello. Good morning. My name is Anita Rao. I am the new English teacher. Hello. Good morning. I am Satya Narayan. Nice to meet you, Miss Anita Rao. Please meet Ravi, my assistant. Hello. How do you do? How do you do? So there are some very interesting things in this conversation which we need to note. The first thing is, in formal context, we should use our full name, right? 
as you see in the conversation anita says my name is anita rao she uses her full name now the second point is let us understand the difference between ms mrs m i s s what is the difference how do we pronounce them m s stands for ms not miss ms with z next one is mrs and the third is miss so ms mrs miss now why have i crossed mrs there on the screen i will explain to you few years back till very recently we used to think that women they should always reveal their marital status whether they are married or they are unmarried they should announce it to the audience right but with uh, lots of uh, changes happening in gender equality gender sensitivity especially in workplace when we are talking about equal uh, treating your employees equally and man a, a male teacher and a female teacher should not feel any discrimination these kind of discourses have come into language so now we believe that a woman should have a choice whether she wants to declare whether she is married or not so as a woman i have a choice whether i want to say that i am a miss or a missus i should not be forced to expose my marital status because if you look at mr if i say this is mr rajesh garu then you cannot guess whether he is married or he is unmarried but for women we have two terms miss for unmarried and missus for married so therefore lots of people they questioned this they said that why is there a discrimination why is a diff why is there a difference women should also have access to a salutation a term which is neutral which does not have to force her to tell the audience whether she is married or she is unmarried so nowadays we use the term ms ms when you are introducing somebody a lady a woman then you did not say mrs you can say ms because uh, just like mr right another very important thing is miss when do we use miss we use miss for young girls below 18 girls who are not considered women right so i repeat myself nowadays we say that just like for men we use mr we do not distinguish whether they are married or unmarried similarly for women we have a neutral term called miss ms therefore we will try to use miss for all women whether they are married or unmarried we will try to avoid using misses until and unless somebody tells you that they want to be uh, addressed like that okay and the third option is miss miss which is for young girls right and doctor we know in our context it is of course doctoral doctor not the medical doctor now let's come to the third point uh, please do not use mr ms doctor for self introduction because self introduction means you are introducing yourself you are not supposed to give these kind of respectable titles to yourself it's like i i cannot say andariki namaskaram i am munishita garu can i say i am munishita garu that will be funny because i should not use garu for my right so similarly i am not supposed to say i am dr munishita pande no i will only say i am munishita pande others when they are introducing me like when shrinivas garu was introducing me then he said that uh, our resource person is dr munishita pande so remember this very clearly that for self introduction we should not use mr ms ms doctor we should just use our name and full name in formal context whereas when we are introducing other people then we are supposed to give this respectable titles the next point is how do you do how do you do is not really a question you know how do you do simply means hello it's just an expression so if somebody tells you how do you do you don't say good good i'm good no you will simply say how do you do that's it let's also note the difference between hello hi and hey 
hello is more formal than hi hi more formal than hey hey is very very informal hey what's up you know that's a very informal hi i am monishita semi formal hello i am monishita pande this is formal the next point is using good morning good evening good afternoon and good night let's note that we use good morning good afternoon and good evening for formal conversations only uh, if you are trying to talk to a colleague for the first time you don't have to always say good morning you know because that will not help you to break the ice you can simply say hi and you can start your conversation so uh, uh, another important thing is good night good night we never start a conversation with good night good night is always used to end a conversation never to begin a conversation so uh, i hope that uh, some important parts of this to us in terms of using full name use of salutations and use of formal uh, greetings and informal greetings let's move to the next slide now at this point of time i would like to request hemlata garu to join us hello hemlata garu uh, yes ma'am yeah so we are going to enact a formal conversation in front of you let me explain the situation so there are two people here we have leela vati who is a new teacher and we have a principal right so leela vati uh, has joined a new school today and she is walking into the principal's office to introduce herself and to give her joining letter so let us look at this conversation can we start hey ma'am ma'am yes ma'am okay let's begin good morning ma'am i am ab leelavati i have been recently transferred to the school as the teacher good morning welcome miss leelavati i am happy to have you here thank you i am very excited to join your school glad to know that hmm so where did you work before the transfer i worked in zphs poruma milla poruma milla okay that's nice what's your qualification um i am a post graduate in english and i did bachelor's of education with english methodology however I believe in the phrase to teach is to learn twice over. So you are a lifelong learner. It's great to see your enthusiasm, Miss Leela Vati. Hmm. You, so have you found a comfortable place here, yes, ma'am? I have found a good accommodation. Where do you live? Uh, I live nearby, very close to the school. Uh, in fact, I really like this place. the ambiance is so peaceful and people are very kind well i ex warm welcome to you i hope you'll enjoy working here for the welfare of our students yes ma'am i promise i will try to give my best thank you thank you hema ma'am for helping us with that conversation thank now let quickly look at some important things to observe in this conversation as you saw this is a formal context you have a new teacher walking into her principal's office trying to make a good impression good first impression with her principal she will give her joining letter after this and start her new journey so that is the context so she is using good morning good afternoon so she can use good morning because that's a very formal context so she is meeting her for the first time we also observed some weak forms like instead of i am i am instead of i will i'll instead of i have i have instead of saying did not didn't instead of do not don't instead of cannot can't etc etc so these are all called weak forms so in english spoken english especially remember in written english we should not use weak forms in written english we should write full i am i have i do not etc but for spoken english if we use these contracted forms or weak forms 
then it gives some sort of natural flow to our con to our speech it makes a sound very uh, uh, comfortable and fluent so contractions and weak forms help us to develop fluency so you can think about this or for example instead of saying madam if you say ma'am then that is again very conversational and and it adds to your naturalness in speech another important point is when you are introducing yourself in formal context then instead of saying ma you can say post graduate i am a post graduate or i am a graduate instead of saying b ed you can say bachelor's in education we will see more examples in the later half of the webinar next is use unique impression Uh, uh, create a unique impression. For example, in the conversation, Leela Vatit said, "To teach is to learn twice over." So she is trying to use a phrase which will communicate to her principal that she is a very open-minded person. She believes that teaching is nothing but actually learning. Right? Uh, going back to Piaget's the theory. Remember, our children already have the natural. Uh, uh, trait to learn. They already know a lot, so they are not empty vessels. So we, as teachers, we believe that we are also learning. So she used this phrase to express her openness, her flexibility, and uh, she also expressed a positive attitude by saying that I will try to do my best. I am a very open kind of a person. So you know, in your introductions, if you uh, Uh, co communicate to your audience that you are a positive person. You express your positivity through some way. Then it always helps you to bond with people to create a good impression. Uh, there are also some words there. If you note, in a formal conversation, instead of saying "my house is nearby," you can say "I have" um, or "I have got a good house." You can say "I have got a good accommodation." Accommodation means a place to live. Right, especially when you have gone to a new place, uh, um, and you're looking for a place to stay, not like your own house. Accommodation is not used for a house that belongs to you, which you are owner of. Accommodation is used for a rented place where you have got and you are going to stay for some time. Uh, ambience, uh, ambience uh, can be used instead of atmosphere. That is again a more uh, Refined or formal way of saying that the uh, uh, the feel of the place, the aura of the place, the energy of the place is very conducive. Is very nice for you. Okay, we move to the of the webinar. Semi-formal conversation. So we have discussed formal conversation, and now we are going to a semi-formal situation. Now. Uh, Oh, let's understand what we are trying to do in this section. We are saying that as teachers, we uh, all have to do certain things to keep learning, right? So for our own professional development, we go and attend and meet people. For example, a district level workshop or a course. For example, the spoken English course is a, a CPD activity, continuous professional development activity, uh, right? Because of COVID nineteen, this is happening completely on uh, 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 online mode. But uh, in normal context, you have to go and meet people physically, right? Uh, for workshops, for seminars, for meetings, for conferences, at some point, right? So, how do we introduce ourselves in a CPD activity? CPD means continuing professional development. Uh, now, before we look at a conversation, let us uh, remember a few things. When you have gone for a course, for example, or a workshop that your school wants you to uh, attend, uh, you are in an event. There are say two hundred teachers who are attending it. Okay, and you are trying to meet more people, new people whom you don't know. Take initiative to introduce yourself. Okay. I uh, don't always wait that others will come and talk to me. Then only I will talk. Take initiative, because only when you try to go and connect with people, they will get a chance to connect with you, right? Next is take genuine interest in people. Don't just ask people's name just just like that. If you get an opportunity to initiate a conversation, take interest in that person. 
try to understand what kind of a teacher he or she is what do they do in their class what is their teaching philosophy uh, have they done something unique for their children or from what are their achievements what is their belief about teaching engage genuinely show interest in people's uh, uh, you know um, way of teaching or being a teacher the third point is again very important especially for spoken english many a times what we do is we put many negative thoughts in our heads when we go to an event we look at everybody and we think oh nobody likes me if i go and talk to somebody they will think something about me oh, i am not good enough i cannot speak good english no 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 i should not try i so we hold ourselves back from introducing ourselves let's not do that let's assume let's believe that everybody likes me in this room whoever is there everybody likes me let me just think that everybody likes me then you will feel comfortable to go and at least try and initiate a conversation and the final point is highlight your passion your uniqueness in the profession right like i said think of an adjective which defines you as a teacher what is it that you have done uniquely for your uh, uh, school what is it that is makes you different from your colleagues they are also very good teachers they have their speciality you have your speciality think about that and foreground it in your introduction now we are going to uh, listen to a uh, conversation uh, at this point of time i request rajesh garu and hemlata garu to please join me uh, let's quickly yeah. understand the context so there are three teachers they have uh, they are attending a district level spoken english course organized by apscrt and they are in a room uh, let's imagine the context and we have three teachers three ap teachers rajesh Moni and Hema. These are the names of the three teachers. Let us see how they introduce each other. Let's get started. Can we start? Yes. Okay. Hi. Teaching is good luck. I am a primary teacher. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. My name is Moni. i teach in zphs narayanavanam at the secondary level i am a very enthusiastic science teacher i love to teach students by taking them outside the class the same thing i use science teachers for i classes are boring but you seems to be a fascinating teacher thank you uh I believe that students learn best when they experience it. For example, I take them out into the nature. We see plants, trees, flowers. We touch them. We feel them. This helps me to, you know, uh, kind of, you know, teach. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I am sorry to interrupt, but I have got to. Yeah. Oh, oh! I'm so sorry, Rajesh Garu. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Hema. She also teaches in my school. We are colleagues, and we work together. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. I teach English. Okay, English. That's interesting. So, what's your teaching style? Are you also an outdoor person like Moni? No, I'm quite the opposite. I like to do things inside the class in a cozy environment. I love telling stories and I use drama techniques to motivate my learners. I also experiment with different TLMs. Oh, that's great! I too like to make different TLM for my students. Recently, I made a TLM for the state level competition and got a prize. Wow! Oh, really? really? Congratulations! You have to share some ideas with us. Sure, I have a YouTube channel. I can share the link with you. Don't you mind sharing your number? 
Hari, I am not on WhatsApp, but I can share my email address. Well, I am very active on social media and phone, so you can take my number. Uh, you can note down. It's nine three one zero double two five eight two five. Okay, just thanks a lot. I will just drop a message in a moment. My email ID is e h e m a dot v s at the rate of gmail dot com. Please send me a test mail, and I will respond. Sure, I will send in some time. I will share my YouTube link. You can like, comment, and share. Definitely, I'll do that. Thanks. Okay, see you around. Enjoy the workshop. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Hema Ma'am and Rajesh Sir. Thank you, Ma'am. Now let's uh, look at some interesting points from that conversation. First of all, notice one thing very carefully. This was a CPD context, and this is the first time you're meeting uh, uh, this teacher, but. instead of being very formal very officious good morning i would like to introduce myself instead of taking a very formal kind of a language and context uh, rajesh sir he opted for a semi formal context why because he thought that if i uh, try to break the ice with my colleagues because they can be my future collaborators we can work together we can sit in the workshop and do things together after the workshop we can connect with each other uh, as as fellow teachers so even when you are meeting somebody for the first time but you want to break the ice and you know that you will become part of the same team then try to semi formal rather than being very officious and very formal Uh, so instead of uh, saying good morning you can simply say hi or hello that's totally fine uh, share your passion about the profession and similar interests so something that i have been telling you that talk about your originality like we saw in this conversation each of the teachers they talked about who they are as teachers right like moni ma'am told told about uh, uh, the fact that she believes in outdoor teaching right experiential learning uh hema ma'am said that she believes in drama techniques she likes uh, uh, students to uh, uh, you know uh, get into storytelling or into creative work like making tlms so each and every one of us have something about ourselves which is unique so share that because only when you share that then you will find common interest like rajesh sir and hema ma'am they found a common interest of tlm right so the more and more you share about your the people coming in and having a interesting conversation now uh, when you are in a group especially and two people are talking and you have one or two people who are just watching you then it is a very rude thing to do you know like i and you are talking and there is third person standing there that person is not getting the chance to talk that's a rude thing so if you see that something someone is there in the group one or two people who are only observing then you should interrupt and ask the person to introduce the other person right so for example moni and rajesh they got introduced and rajesh asked moni to introduce hema because hema and moni were together right so signal how do you signal by saying i'm sorry to interrupt but can you introduce me to your colleague or your friend something like that so bring other people into the conversation and get mutual introductions done to involve everybody be inclusive the next point is you may not be comfortable to share your numbers uh, some of us we like to share our numbers freely some of us we believe in privacy we don't want to give our number to everybody but never say no in a cpd context you know because cpd is all about networking and we are going to have one session on spoken english for networking uh, after few days next week uh, so we'll discuss that in detail there but uh, for the for the present conversation let's remember that if anybody asks for your phone number you should never say no 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 i can't give you my phone number that is very rude okay so you have to politely find an excuse so like in this conversation we saw that hema ma'am said uh, hema ma'am said that um 
I'm not on WhatsApp. I'm not on social media. So why don't you take my email ID? So always offer your email address. Don't deny phone number and not give an alternate way to contact. Right. So uh, 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 if you don't want to share your number, you can say I'm not on social media. I'm not. I have uh, a little connective connectivity issues in my house. So phone doesn't work for me. Uh, please take my email address. I'm very comfortable with email, something like that. So always share your contact. If not phone number, then email address for sure. Uh, then comes, um, yeah, so I think we have discussed that point already. That don't ever say no and don't deny a contact detail to anybody who is asking for it. Uh, now the next section is introducing yourself to a group of teachers. So right now, so far we were looking at one-to-one -one introduction or one and two people introduction in a small group. Now we will see that if we have to stand and introduce ourselves to a big audience, 20 people, 30 people, like in an orientation program, a workshop, right? So how do we do that? So for this section, I invite Hemlata ma'am to please take over. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, welcome. Ma'am, please go ahead. Okay. As teachers, we are continuous learners. So we need to attend orientation programs for our continuous professional development. In such programs, it's only common to introduce ourselves to the fellow group of teachers. For instance, let's say, good morning everyone, I'm Hemalata. I teach English at ZPHS Narayanavanam. I'm a postgraduate in English and I specialized in English methodology in my Bachelor of Education. In my free time, I like reading books and listening to music. I think my strengths are that I'm a quick learner and I don't give up easily. My weakness is that sometimes I become stubborn and egoistic. I'm a very passionate teacher and I believe that my primary responsibility is to shape my young learners into good citizens. I'm looking forward to getting to know you all. Thank you very much for having me here. So here, we have to remember that, as ma'am said already, instead of saying MA, MSc, I'm a postgraduate in English, I'm a postgraduate in science, if you see like that, it will be more impactful. And for self-introduction, do not use Mr., Miss, or Doctor. Others may use it for you, as already ma'am said this one. And also, if we describe ourselves, if we use catchy adjectives, it will be good. For instance, I'm a passionate teacher. I'm a hardworking teacher, I'm an enthusiastic teacher, I'm a sincere teacher, like that, it will connect more, it will sound more good. By mentioning our hobbies to audience, audience feel that you are known person. By mentioning our strengths, like I'm a quick learner, I'm an Avidly, avid reader, they feel that they are at home with you. And also, if you mention our weaknesses, they also, the, our audience, feel that they are very close to us. And as a teacher, we have to share our vision. For example, I believe that my primary responsibility is to shape my students into good citizens or to inculcate moral values in my students, or to teach positive attitude, to develop positive attitude in my st students, that will be good, that will say our vision to audience. Whenever we use proficient terms in English, we use indefinite article as. Here, I would like to say that in our reading material, there is a typing error, uh, definite article. So please correct it as indefinite article. 
So uh, when we say profession terms, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a business analyst, like that. When we say profession terms in English, we should use indefinite article E. So with this, I have concluded. Now, Monsta ma'am is going to discuss another situation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Himrata ma'am, for that very clear um, explanation of introduction to a group of people in a formal context. Now we are going to discuss the last uh, topic of today's webinar, introducing yourself to a group of students. Now remember, uh, in a, a CPD context, you're introducing the formal context. Now with students, we don't want to make it very formal. We want to keep it semi-formal because the way we introduce ourselves to our students will go a long way in deciding the kind of relationship we'll strike with them, right? Making a good first impression in front of your class is also equally important. You want to build a good rapport, a good warm relationship. So uh, here, um, let's say that it's my first cl uh, class of the term. I'm meeting a new group of students and um, uh, I am in a class and let's uh, do a little model kind of a conversation. Uh, so I have uh, children here who will be with me to take part in this model conversation. This is Ahiri and this is Shyam. Welcome to the webinar. Can we start? Yes. Okay. So here we go. Good morning, everyone. I am Monishita Pandey. I am your new English teacher. Good morning, ma'am. I have heard that you all are very hardworking and talented. Each one of us have some hidden talent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let me tell you something about myself, right? I'm your new teacher. You want to know something? Yes? yes. Okay. I love reading books and traveling. When I visit new places, you know what I do? I collect some interesting things from there and I keep it with me. I look forward to going out, maybe on an exciting school trip or something. Yeah? Okay, now I think I have said a lot about myself. I want to know about all of you. So I want all of you to introduce yourself, tell your name and one thing that you like. Let's start with you. I am Ahiri. I am I like sing. Ahiri, I am sure you sing well. You have a beautiful voice, Ahiri. So you like singing. Very good. Would you like to sing your favorite song? Come on. Come on, Ahiri. A big round of applause for Ahiri. Let's clap. Okay. So, let's now understand this little conversation. Right? When you are trying to introduce yourself to your class and you're trying connection with your or the students then try not to use active voice try not to say that this class consists of good students i have heard that uh, this class has talented students instead of putting it in a passive manner it is good to use you the moment you say i have heard you all then each and every student sitting in the class will connect with you they will think oh ma'am is talking to me so using you helps us to make instant connection. Next is share your likes, dislikes, some family story, some personal anecdote, which is inspiring. Because research has shown that students are genuinely interested to know about their teachers. Remember that a student and teacher relationship is not just limited to the textbook and the information. It is a it's a, a very special relationship 
what we tell our students go a long way in determining what they think about themselves and their future so the students are very very interested to know about their teachers lives so think about a story from your childhood which has stayed with you or think about your favorite story which is inspiring so say something like that or talk about your personal likes dislikes these immediately help students to come close to you and help in rapport building another very important thing is we have to be very very careful about the language we use in class when i say i have heard that you all are hard working and talented remember i am using these two words very very consciously and carefully what type of adjective should i use in the class try to use adjectives which can be achieved through efforts like being hard working is not something which we are born with we can become more and more hard working or being sincere being punctual being kind for example these are qualities that human beings can inculcate in them so if you use these kind of adjectives then what will happen in class everybody will feel that yes i can become hard working even if a student is not punctual he or she will think my ma'am said that you all are very punctual then you that student will try to think that yes i should be punctual or i should do my homework properly so try to think of adjectives which can be inculcated which can be developed over time if you are using in born kind of adjectives like talented intelligent bright uh, these kind of ad smart you know these kind of adjectives then please try to use a disclaimer for example i said we are all i have heard you all are talented we all have some hidden talent isn't it so when i say we all have a hidden talent then even the child in your class who has a low self esteem who thinks that he is not talented or she is not talented she will think oh ma'am said we have hidden talents which means i also must be having some talent or when you are saying you all are very intelligent then you should also say uh, uh, just being good in maths is not intelligent intelligence are of different types some of us are intelligent with nature some of us are intelligent with each other interpersonal remember we had discussed multiple intelligence theory in the previous set of webinars so if you are using these kind of adjectives then also tell your students that you know it's not i mean everybody is intelligent in their own ways everybody is talented in their own ways so be inclusive don't use uh, words in a way which is going to feel your make your stu some students one or two students also in the class should not feel excluded because remember that children they take every word uttered from your mouth very seriously i'm sure when we look back and think about our childhood if we remember one teacher who told us something positive we carry that as the truth that you know i remember my geography teacher had told me that i am a very uh, talented person nobody told me i was talented when i was small by the way you know i used to always hear that uh, i am the younger in the family so people used to say oh she is very shy she cannot talk but my geography teacher had said that i am very talented and that word stayed with me as i grew older i told myself no i am talented i am going to uh, uh, nurture certain qualities in me so remember that don't brand your students and label them as uh, bright dumb intelligent Uh, not intelligent we have to be very careful when we are using these adjectives we have to say things which will make everybody feel comfortable that yes i can also become punctual i can also i am also intelligent in my own way i may not be good in maths but i am good in language i may not be good in language i am good in science you know something i am good in art maybe i am not good in um, uh, good in speaking i am not good in speaking maybe i am good in reading so every student must feel that yes there is one aspect of this adjective which i can relate to another important point is using rhetorical devices like when you are introducing yourself with the class ask these kind of questions isn't it shouldn't we go for a school trip do you want to know about me now these are rhetorical questions you know questions which don't really you don't expect people to say no no ma'am we don't want to listen to you no right is that isn't it so these are rhetorical it only uh, reinforces 
you, what you are saying and connects with the audience. Reduce anxiety of performance and nervousness. Remember, it's the first class uh, of the term or it's a new school that you have joined. So when you are asking students to introduce themselves, instead of making them stand and introduce, it can add to anxiety. Because remember, if you have to stand in front of the whole class and introduce, it is full of uh, performance pressure. So don't do that. Ask all the students to come together and form a circle and then one by one people can introduce. Or everybody in the class can stand and uh, uh, do it. Or everybody can sit down and they can introduce. So make, create a very comfortable, cozy environment for introduction. Everybody is sitting and one person is standing and introducing is very uh, anxiety uh, laden kind of an activity. So take care of those things also. And the final point here is class introductions can be done in many, many creative ways. You, there are different kind of ice breaking activities. Lots of them are available on the internet. Uh, we are going to uh, leave a YouTube link uh, in the description of this video. You can watch that. It's a five minute small video which shows you one way of doing class introductions in a very uh, active I, so uh, one uh, way in which I do my class introductions every year when I start a new class new batch of students what I do is I um, ask my students to think of one adjective finds them and it starts with the same letter of their name so for example my name is Monishita the first letter is M so I think of an adjective like uh, magical so I say uh, we take a ball, we stand in a circle and I throw the ball at somebody, they get the ball and they have to introduce your, themselves using an adjective. So for example, if the ball comes to me, I say, hello everyone, I am magical Monishita and I throw the ball. So then other students, they use different adjectives like I am a, I am good looking Garima or I am sweet Shweta, etc, etc. So uh, this is just one example, but there are many, many creative ways in which class introductions can be done and you can explore such ideas in your, for your classes. Thank you so much. That brings us to the end of today's webinar and we are now open for question and answer session. Thank you very much, madam. Very, 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 very impressive topic, ma'am. Thank you. Very much interested in the topic. The, at the beginning also, how the, so most of the people are confusing with the miss, 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 missus, where we should use, where we should not use, why should we should not use. These things you have clearly clarified. So most of the doubts know what they are being, have been posting on the comment session. We covered many of those things. So once again, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, sir. I'm glad. Yeah. So, still uh, a few questions. Miriyala Suresh, you want to know how are you? How do you do? Which one is more uh, uh, formal with very close persons among these two, which he wants, he need to use? How are you? How do you do? What clearly differentiate? Okay. Thank you for that question. Yeah, it's a very important question. Now, remember, how are you is completely different and how do you do is very different. They don't mean the same thing. How are you means you are expecting an answer, right? When I say, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, but how do you do does not mean how are you? How do you do means hello. It's just another way to say hello. How do you do is very formal, actually, you know? And uh, in day-to-day -day context, we generally use how are you how are you i'm fine so fine thank you so uh, first point is both of them mean different things how are you means how are you just uh, you get a response for it how do you do you, how do you do does not give you a response if you say how do you do the other person will also say how do you do how do you do should always be answered through how do you do not good bad ugly uh, stressed no how do you do will be how do you do so how do you do just means hello and we use it in a very, very formal context and we don't really have to bother much about that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, another question. Take a 
he is working in very rural area and he want to simply uh, easy way to introduce uh, the students he is requesting you to suggest any useful websites so that he can go to visit the website and he can learn okay uh any one particular website i uh, don't have in mind but i will there are a uh, uh, there are a number of videos uh, available on youtube which talk about class introductions about activities that you can do for ice breaking um uh, i will keep this uh, question in mind and uh, in the comments section uh, i will post some some more useful videos one video is already part of the materials pack i will post one or two more videos and maybe one one or two uh, suggested websites for your reference but i need a little time to decide uh, which website will be useful for you but i will get back to you on this surely thank you very much and uh, mangal uh, shahal ma'am how uh, how did you introduce the students at you no was it not clear so i can't hear you your voice yes. is breaking yes yes you have introduced some students from what they uh, what are the class age uh, you have demonstrated some no no sir i can't hear you properly oh, i can't for, hear you sorry, 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 can for, can you put yeah I will ask can again. Can you put the chat box? I can. Is it right? Yeah. Right, right now, okay, ma'am. In the uh, demo session. Little better, but voice. You oh, oh. in your demo, uh, you brought two children. So. Yeah, I got two children. I can. Yes. Hear that. What right? are their age yeah. and uh, classes? Because uh, their okay. language. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. So uh, one child was uh, nine years old. Uh, she is just going to class four now, and the other child is six and a half years. So he is in class one. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Hemala Tagaru. Ah, Hemala Tagaru. Uh, do you have any yes, questions sir. to ask, uh, madam? Ah, uh, no, sir. Want to no. know anything more? <laughs> okay then. No, so. Ah, uh, can I say one thing? Thank you. Yes, just please. one line. Please. I want to thank uh, uh, Himlata oh. Sir and Rajesh Karu for being part of this team. This was a truly collaborative effort. Uh, we worked together, and I'm very happy to be part of this team. Thank you so much for your. Thank you. uh there is another question thank you ma'am may i yes. ask yeah madam in our primary class students feeling difficult to read the books like uh, i have i am i will i have did not can't haven't etc in the test books is there any wrong to print full form please means what he is exactly asking in our test books we are printing in a shorter way can't mm. haven't am i apostrophe am in such a way which is uh, there his uh, students are uh, facing difficulty is there any okay. suggestions or alternate for that nagarjuna is asking yeah. that yeah. so nagarjuna garu the uh, thing is uh, exposing your students to weak forms these are called contracted forms or weak forms as i explained and uh, exposing your students to this is very important because it uh, brings fluency in speech so that's why in the text so that the teachers uh, de develop some activities and you know bring the students uh, attention to this so you can actually play some games around it right for example you can uh, introduce five words maybe not all the words so did not do not have not cannot and uh, maybe one more i will take these five only and give them the short forms the contracted forms and then you can do it through repetition you can do it through uh, some um, you know some game where they have to uh, 
uh, talk about themselves. For example, what I do with my students is, uh, 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 I ask, so I take a ball, we sit in circle, and then I uh, pass the ball to a student. The student has to take the ball and make one sentence with don't. So they have to think of one thing that they don't do, which, which is part of their moral values. Right. For example, these are adult learners, so they they will say I joke. So you know that creates some fun in the class because people are like, okay, this boy is very uh, particular about this. Or some girl will say, uh, I don't, uh, 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 I don't uh, tease others. So when you say I don't tease others or I don't bully others, then others say that okay, this person is very nice. So you can tell your students to think of one bad habit that they don't do. You know. So you can create these interesting uh, topics in the class and you can make them play some games to uh, practice. So don't, can't. These are difficult for our students. They need practice. So you can think of some activities like that and you can make them practice. That will be important. That's why we are giving them in the textbook because uh, otherwise we have seen that our students who, um, uh, who don't have too much exposure to English, when they go out in the world and they speak, their speech is very formal. You know, even if day to day conversation, they are being very, very formal to each other. They are not able to catch that natural flow of speaking English. Contractions will help your students to become very natural and fluent. So you should think of some specific activities and you should make them do it to practice. Don't take too many words. Take two, three, four words and give them a nice, interesting context and they can come up with sentences. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, really uh, very uh, magnificent and uh, super presentation and most of the questions were covered uh, in your speech actually whatever the question no so well planned uh, session you have uh, done today thank you. so thank, thank you, you so much ma'am very useful thank topic also because whenever you go change our position or place no we need to introduce ourselves with new people where every day we are come coming across new people. So very useful topic and for the, choosing this topic and giving an excellent presentation, I, uh, on behalf of our teacher, I convey our thanks to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. We also no. thanks uh, Dr. Uh, Hemalata Garu and uh, Mr. Rajesh Garu for coming and joining and sharing the topic today, today's topic. And uh, Thank you, sir. We also thank all the viewers uh, for uh, regularly visiting us and watching to us and uh, sharing their opinions, asking the questions and making this session more interactive really. We thank each and every teacher who are uh, watching this uh, YouTube and Facebook live sessions. Thank you one and all. Uh, for uh, tomorrow, we have uh, on day 10th uh, inter another interesting topic describing things, people and events and Protein things by Dr. Uh, Karen Shobagaru will be there. So I request you all be ready for today tomorrow's topic also. And then uh, share, comment, subscribe our channel. Thank you, Manshita, ma'am. Thank you, Anandal. Namaste. Namaskar.